Welcome to the Little Cities of Black Diamonds Fest 2021 from whence we came. Thank you for joining us as we research, share, and celebrate stories of migration to our region. My name is Nikki Mazaka and I'm a member here at the Little Cities of Black Diamonds Council. So far this week, our historians have shared with us their research and their wonderful presentations on migration to the Little Cities region, how the population changed over time, and what drew people here in the first place. We want to end our festival this year by zooming in and sharing personal histories from folks in the Little Cities area. Mary Lou Pompey Wysinski, originally of Corning, Ohio, is one of our volunteer storytellers. We met up at the Ohio's Winding Road pop-up in Shawnee, Ohio, where they're busy preparing for the holiday season. Mary Lou now works with Ohio's Winding Road, which supports and promotes a new experience-based economy in Ohio's Appalachian region. I am uh, Mary Lou Pompey Wysinski, and I spent 13 years as building principal of Mill Creek Elementary. I'm here today to talk about my ancestry. My friend who's really into genealogy did this for me. She did this so that my children would have records. My great-grandfather migrated here from Italy. In recent months, immigration has really been a hot topic. Not only, not only in the United States, but in the area. Everyone has differing opinions. My family were all immigrants. Came through Ellis Island, both sides, my maternal uh, side and my paternal side, all. And I wouldn't be here today. So I think it's very important to talk about these things. My grandfather, my great-grandfather, came here specifically to work in the coal mines. So that was part of my heritage. My great-grandfather, my father, and my husband all worked in the mines in the area. My great-grandfather worked in the coal mines in Congo and in Santoy. My father worked in seven different coal mines. He worked at number nine, he worked at Brownfield. Um, he ended his mining career at Peabody Coal. My husband worked for Southern Ohio Coal Company, which was AEP affiliated, Meg's Mine in, in Meg's County. So my grandfather was Cesar Lazzetti, and known as Joseph Lazzetti. He was born in 1879 in Italy. I keep thinking to myself, I could be living here. Now that is in the furthest northern part of Italy, Swiss Alps area. My grandmother, Caterina Maria Fanaia, was born in 1868. She was 11 years older than my grandfather. And my grandfather would often say, older chicken make good broth. <laughs> Just a little family folklore, I guess. And um, she passed away in, in 1949. I, I never knew her. I did know my grandfather very well. I had the opportunity as a young girl to go sit and talk with him. And even when he was 95 years old, he was still very spry and loved talking about working in the coal mines and walking to work. So my, my grandfather came to this country in 1904, my great-grandfather, with a sign, he held up a sign, because at the time he did not speak English, um, with a sign that said Corning, Ohio, because his brother, his older brother, was already here working in the mines, and he came to be with him and work in the mines. Um, and so he left his wife and my grandmother in Italy. He worked for a few years, saved and sent them passage to America. He had, I think, a total of like $32 in his pocket when he came from Ellis Island. I'm not sure how he actually made it to Corning, whether it was, I think at the time, they rode by train, by flat car trains. He came to Corning, lived in a house on the east side of Corning, often talked about his times in the coal mine. He had a job at the mines in Congo, it would have been, a, I would say, probably a six, seven mile walk one way to work. And he also talked about working in the mines in Santoy, which have been probably a, a five mile walk from his home. My favorite stories he told me were of working in the mines in Santoy and, and about the boom days of Santoy and, and how it was really no big deal to see a gunfight back in the day when he was working in the mines he, it, because there were saloons. So he often talked about those times. He never really talked a lot about his actual job in the mines. 
at the time when my great grandfather would have worked in the mines, there wouldn't have been the machinery. So I'm assuming that it was with a shovel. He was here before grandma. Yes, yeah, she came after he sent money for her to come. He worked, made money, sent money for her to come. And my grandmother, Julia, was like 16, 18 months old at the time, an infant, my grandmother. He came through New York, Ellis Island, on May the 3rd, 1904. But you know, Lizetti was never changed. My Pompey was changed. Eichel was changed. That's my mom's side. But Pompey, Pompey was changed, but Lizetti was never changed. And it's Italian. Um, Pompey was P-O-M-P-E-I, and they changed it to P-O-M-P-E-Y. The story is when my grandma and grandfather got married at St. Bernard, the priest changed it. Eichel was supposed to have been Eichlin. Isn't it strange? This one was never changed. Yeah, Cesar Lizetti, the 3rd of May, 1904. Siding departure, Port Haver, arrived in New York. Isn't that cool? We were an American family. I, I remember Grandma uh, Julia making Italian dishes. Her spaghetti was amazing. You know, I, I remember those things, but we were American. We were an American family. I mean, they were a melting pot. I mean, my mother's family were Italian, my and, and German, her, her dad, and my father's family were Polish. So, I mean, and they all lived in the same little community, just a couple doors apart. So maybe that's part of being accepting of everyone and, and their ideas and blending those ideas. So, okay, so the Eichels were of German descent. They were actually part of the German singing club in Corning. Corning had a German singing club. It was all male. They were part of that and very fond memories as a young girl of hearing my grandfather and my uncle George sing. They had big booming voices and they all loved to sing. And that carried through to the next generation. My aunt Catherine played piano beautifully. We would all stand around and sing at least once a week. Such fond memories growing up. They all worked very hard. I, I often think about, and my, my grandfather Pompey was also a coal miner, worked in the coal mines his whole life, and that would be my dad's dad. I remember him walking up the big hill to his house, always bent over with his hands behind his back. Looking back, that's how he would have been in the mines, because the roof was so low. Well, when you talk about a little city of black diamonds, Dad ran the continuous miners at Peabody Coal. A very difficult machine, I think. This guy sent this to Mom, said, notice how many cushions he uses, Mrs. Pompey. He probably tells you how hard he works because he's sitting on cushions. <laughs> I thought that was cute. So he retired from Peabody Coal in 1991. But like I said earlier, he worked in at least seven of the area coal mines as a young fella. Yeah. Had very, very fond memories of her grandmother Lizetti and spent hours talking with her, stoking their fire and just listening to her. My family was very close. My maternal and paternal sides both were very, very close. Joe Lizetti, who we're talking about today, would be my mother's grandfather. I do have some fun stories about the Eichel family also. The Eichels were of German descent. My great Great grandfather and grandmother needed help in the home. They went to the orphanage at the time and brought home a 17 year old girl who later married my great grandfather. That's the homestead. Yeah, that's the picture of where they lived. Everyone's from Corning. <laughs> Everyone settled into Corning, Ohio. The coal industry and the railroads were booming. My mother's paternal side were railroaders on my dad's side, yes. Actually a really fantastic, oh, I love this story. My mom's parents, Henry and Julia Eichel, were married at St. Bernard's Church by a father, Qualey. My dad's parents, Anna Standish and Mike Pompey, were married at St. Bernard's by a father, Qualey. My mom and dad married at St. Bernard's in 1949. Father Qualey was a Monsignor and he came and married my parents. Mary Lou has extensive documentation and photos of her family, but wishes she had first-person recordings. Sure wish that I would have asked more questions, and my suggestion to any young person, ask 
your grandparents. Ask your parents and record, record, record. I'm sure my grandparents had so, so many stories to tell and I didn't ask. Thank you so much to Mary Lou for sharing your time and your stories with us for the festival this year. The holiday pop-up for Ohio's Winding Road is now open, so pop on over to Shawnee and say hello if you get a chance. They have some great holiday gifts that are all locally sourced. A huge thank you to Cheryl Blosser for setting up the interview. This wouldn't have been possible without you, Cheryl. Thank you all so much for listening and participating in the Little Cities of Black Diamonds Fest 2021. If you're interested in sharing your family's migration story or your own, we're having a story swap at 12 o'clock p.m. on Saturday, October 12th on Zoom. You can find the link to that on our festival website. It's www.lcbdohio.org slash lcbd-festival-2021. If you're interested in learning more about the history of the Little Cities of Black Diamonds region, please visit our website, www.lcbdohio.org. We have several history articles, short documentaries, a digital archive, and the Miners Registry, all of which are free and open to the public. If you have a question, you can fill out our Ask an Historian form online and we'll be happy to answer it for you. Enjoy the rest of the festival. Bye, y'all.